Dying Light 2 offers a lot of really powerful upgrades quite early on that you'll definitely not want to miss out on since they'll make you stronger, much faster and provide a lot of convenience. And in this video we're gonna go ahead and check out some of the most important upgrades and unlocks that you should definitely get at the start of the game if you just want to have more fun or simply fare better in most of the encounters you'll see in Dying Light 2. I also want to give a huge shout out to Fan over on Twitter, he won the giveaway for a free deluxe edition of Dying Light too and yeah big shout out to them but don't worry there's another one coming right now if you want to take part in it simply be subscribed to the channel follow the links down below and again i will reach out to the winner at the end of the giveaway now let's begin with probably the most important upgrade that you should focus on from the very beginning which is your stamina level at the start of the game it's pretty low and you won't be able to climb most of the tall things which also hold some of the strongest items in the game and for that you will need a inhibitors now these are pretty much the upgrades that you use to both level up your stamina as well as hp but as i've said yeah stamina is a bit more important in the early stages of the game at least until you reach about 160 so to get these you need something called gre crates which usually you find in quarantine zones anomaly places and a few other locations now for the quarantine zones i recommend doing these during the night since they will spawn way less infected inside the anomaly is a brand new encounter with a new enemy type is pretty fun and you also get these throwable spears in the encounter that you can use to deal some really high damage against that mini boss and it will also provide quite a lot of inhibitors but there's another way which might be way easier for you and way more abundant which is just checking randomly inside many of the buildings inside dying light too especially so pay attention to your key alerts which will indicate if there's a gre crate nearby and oftentimes you can get the same amount of inhibitors that you would get from the much tougher quarantine zones and anomalies. Now the next unlock is not really important for combat as much as it is for exploration and you might have already stumbled upon a train station. Definitely go ahead and always unlock these when you stumble upon them as these are the only way to fast travel in Dying Light 2 and they are pretty amazing at providing both permanent shelter, a ton of resources but as I've said the most important bit here is that they serve as fast travel points especially once you start going into the city center and unlock some of the other areas when you progress in the main story and of course the train stations can be found in all of the regions of dying light too so almost every district will have at least one of these train stations that you can use for fast travel but moving on to number three let's talk about your own character and some of the best early on skills that you should definitely focus on starting of course with the parkour skill line and one of my favorite skills here is the far jump that that only costs about 120 stamina to unlock but it's by far the best for traversal as you can pretty much use any obstacle you vault over to spring your character and jump very far away i'm not even kidding this is a really powerful ability that can be used in a number of circumstances and especially since it doesn't require too much setup just vault over any obstacle or car or whatever and then press e or the equivalent button on the controller to spring forward with the character and reach places that you could never before even more so it's absolutely free it doesn't cost any stamina bar and you can spam it back to back as long as you're just going over some of these obstacles another one that i recommend also early on in case you're going a little bit overboard with the jumping is the active landing since it will let you to kind of break your fall and just do a rollover when you're jumping from too far away and even more so it definitely saved my butt in many of the situations that would otherwise kill me now for the combat line go ahead and immediately unlock perfect dodge and perfect parry right away these are amazing at staggering enemies when either parrying or dodging at the right time and the window of parrying and dodging in this game is like really high so it shouldn't be too difficult to pull them off it requires a minimal point investment into hp but it's especially useful against humans since they tend to use more advanced mechanics compared to other typical infected so you can easily open up their defenses and follow up with some really powerful attacks to take them down way quicker the next really strong attack i recommend is obviously the drop kick which makes a return from the first dying light game and unlike the first game it's now way more powerful as it requires way less setup so unlike the first dying light you don't have to run anymore to activate it you can simply stand still jump in the air and then double tap that button mid air to activate it and it's pretty much amazing now because you can align your shots way better than before 
4 to take down a lot more enemies, especially with the added verticality in Dying Light 2. Overall, still the same feeling as always, even more powerful now with the setup, and as always, amazing to dropkick those enemies or some of those bosses. But moving on to number 4, let's talk about blueprints, upgrades, and weapon repairs. And very early on in the game, you will get a really powerful weapon mod called Spark, which is really great both early and late game, since it can shock the primary target for massive damage and also provide a little bit of AoE if it jumps on additional targets. You can upgrade this by the way at a craft master in exchange for zombie trophies, which you should have plenty of assuming that you looted most of the corpses in the game. It starts small but can quickly level up for a lot more weapon damage and crit chance, which makes it a really powerful mod to have. Now weapon mods, what you need to know about them is that they don't just provide these powerful effects, they also repair your weapons when applied upon them. Each weapon mod when applied will provide plus 50 durability and as you likely noticed, yes, you will need mod slots for that to be possible in the first place. There's also a small trade-off. If you apply a mod on a weapon that's not broken, obviously you won't be able to extend its durability. So here are the two decisions you can go with. Either apply a mod to a weapon early on and provide those powerful effects from the start but lose on the possibility ability to repair it later down the line when it starts breaking down, or do vice versa as in wait until the weapon starts breaking and only then apply the mod and regen some of that durability but at the same time will not have the effect from the very start. So at the start of the game it's smart, especially if you found a very powerful weapon, to first use it until it starts breaking down and only then apply these mods to repair it and make the most out of it. The next one that you should also upgrade and focus on is the medicine which is basically your bandages and the healing method that you will use the most of and which is the most abundant in the game. Eventually your HP if you increase it with inhibitors is going to be way too much for the medicine to have an impactful effect which is why I recommend also giving this a few upgrades, a few levels in there to get at least 100 plus HP when you use it and maybe a lower cooldown on it with the bandages and whatnot. Moving on to number 5, let's also talk about another really significant upgrade upgrade that will get a bit later in the stages of the story, which is your paraglider. Now, of course, this is unmissable, you get it anyway at some point when you reach the city center, but by then you will want to get some resources needed to upgrade that glider in the first place. And that comes in the form of military tech that only drops from, well, airdrops that you find around the city. You can see these with a parachute, kind of like icon, around like tall buildings and other higher up areas but if you invested points in that stamina, as I've told you to do, you will be more than capable of reaching them. So you can get some really powerful upgrades for the paraglider this way, including the possibility to boost your character up and have more air time, have an easier time maneuvering it, and simply just have a lot more going for it to have more air time around the Dying Light 2 environments. And this brings us to the final point, which are the faction upgrades, and the important decision that you have to do when you align yourself with one faction or the other. I definitely suggest deciding very early on which faction you want to align yourself with because it's going to be very important what types of upgrades you get out of them. When you unlock a district building like a water tower or an electric station, you have the decision to either give it to one faction or the other, the peacekeepers or the survivors. And depending on which one you give them to, you're gonna get more powerful upgrades. So here is what you need to know basically. Survivors, they provide a lot of traversal upgrades, a lot more zip lines a lot more jumping pads, air vents and so on around the city that will make traversal way easier. But at the same time, you will be exposed against the infected since you won't really have any traps laying around the city. Peacekeepers on the other hand are all about eliminating the infected, so they will provide some of the most powerful traps in the game like car bombs, pendulum traps, a lot of these like UV lights around the city and it also gives you like a really powerful crossbow that I haven't really found in any other way in the game and it's quite early on in the middle of the track right there. You can obviously be more neutral and mix and match these to get like the most out of them and get upgrades from both of these factions but again I'm not sure exactly how that fares later down the line because right now I'm focusing on the survivors and then in a different playthrough I will focus on the peacekeepers. But totally let me know down below which one of these upgrades did you get or did you miss and what factions are you focusing on. As always we're trying to reach 400k subs by the end of 2022. I think it's totally possible, but not without your 
help. So leaving a like on this video and especially subscribing and activating those notification bells would definitely help a ton. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.